Great guest in the studio now, the salmon and steelhead biologist for the Salmon Center, Clayton David. Good morning, Clayton. Good morning. How's it going, Jeff? Good. Good to see you again. Thanks, Spencer. And we are uh, into now one of the uh, funnest times of the year for volunteers, and this is for the Summer Chum Adult Trap Project. It's been going on. Oh, for uh, many years now. 19 years. This is our 19th year doing this full uh, full weir trap across the Union River. And we uh, enumerate all of the summer chum and all the salmon rays, basically. But summer chum's our target species coming up the Union River. It started on the 15th of the August and goes through October 15th, You got right? it. Yep, yep. And it's 24 hours a day. Volunteers come out, and you'll be uh, trained by great staff and other volunteers uh, to learn about identifying uh, and handling and uh, then releasing mm -hmm. uh, salmon of all variety and sizes yeah. that come into the uh, ch chum trap there. And then um, you, you, go, you look at them and you're able to kind of distinguish them after a little bit, you're going to go, oh, yep, yep, that's that one. And then you mark a note and let them, let them move their way up. Yeah, this is an interesting year this year. Um, because it's an odd year, we have the pinks in the, in the stream as well. So um, our volunteers down there have uh, shifts from 8 to noon, noon to 5, 5 to 10. And then there's an, even an overnight shift that goes from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. Wow. Um, it's quite fun. And that's, that's the one where you get a lot of fish generally, too. All the shifts will get fish. And right now we're in a hot time where there's fish coming in at, at all shifts. But... Like I mentioned a moment ago, you could have summer chum, a pink salmon, a coho salmon, or a chinook salmon in the trap at uh, this point in time right now. So, What are the sizes? I know yeah. when Stephanie and I have done it in the last couple of years, we've gotten fish out of there uh, that are almost, you know, this kind of the size of your arm. Basically, you're yeah, mm -hmm. and they're big. Yeah, so generally, ten to twelve pounds would be a big fish in in, in our trap. Um, we get a lot of five and six pound fish though, and things like that. They're still a fairly large fish, and if you're new to salmon or new to fish at all, like maybe you're a youngster down there at the trap, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to to handle that and kind of get to get a chance to 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 identify it and then uh, and take care of it and then put it in the water again and let cool. it go again. Yeah, it's, it's super really neat. It's cool. really fun for kids too. So how does it work at night? I mean, f for identifying them, is it pretty well illuminated? I would imagine. Like, how do you see the differences in the salmon? Like when yeah. it's after dark and stuff. Yeah, that's a great, great question. Uh, we we have some pretty high powered headlamps and, yeah. and lanterns down there, and then as well as some big shop lights that actually get set up on the bank, and they they, they the light goes right into where the trap is. So you should have a pretty good. Um, um, yeah. ability to see sure. the fish pretty well and you know a lot of people maybe maybe you're a newcomer you, once you see a couple of chum though you're going to know what they look like mm -hmm. pretty quickly it yeah. doesn't take very long to understand the differences between the salmon so mm -hmm. yeah last time we was up there the storm damage mm -hmm. uh, from yeah the big winter storms yeah. how did everything work out on that it, it was a it, it, we have a bunch more wood down in the stream right there at the trap site but i was able to kind of fit the trap in without having to remove any of that habitat and so um now the fish have a nice little hiding spot right before they enter the trap which i think is going to be helpful for them and their safety so yeah so it's been going on for about a half a month now mm -hmm. what are the numbers at we are just under 600 summer chum this year okay. um, and a handful of everything else um, which is below what we've had the last few years um, we've had some fairly outstanding runs the past three years um, but we still you know 600 600 about not even halfway through here um, it's still a pretty good number and shows that that run on the Union River is still fairly stable and um, that we have a good uh, spawning population there. Wasn't it last year like 3,500? 3, 3,600. And the year before that was 5,800, which was the highest year we've had since 1975. Wow. Um, now, salmon yeah. runs are variable every year. Sure. So we can't always predict. But, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, with uh, the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, or they call it the PDO, has switched now into the warming trend. It may mean that we have a few less uh, numbers of fish coming in. Uh, this, the, the, that Pacific decay oscillation tends to affect our salmon numbers quite a bit. So um, we'll have to see as, as, as the years go on. There's a bunch of studies actually going on right now to figure out any correlation between summer chum abundance and that Pacific decay oscillation. There are uh, plenty of overnight opportunities for you yeah. to volunteer. Plus, though, to 
during the week some evening opportunities. Now, are you out there at all? I mean, do you Me? do you have sign-ups for this, or do you come in as needed? I, I t generally come in as needed. I do try to get my family, my kids, and, and my wife down there once or twice a year. Yeah. Um, but it just depends on how many other times I have to go down there. So far this year, I haven't had to actually spend a shift down there. But I, I do spend a lot of time at the trap, as well as uh, my project uh, specialist, Travis. He spends a lot of time there helping folks get comfortable, training them up if they're new, making sure that they're, you know, the trailer's in working order um, and, and that the garbages are empty and all that kind of sure. normal administrative stuff that we do down there, too. But sometimes it's just nice to sit and watch the fish for a while, too. So um, I generally try to get out there a couple times a year, and I usually do at least one overnight shift a year, too. And during the daytime, mm -hmm. there is often... Um, people that will come by yeah. and then you just kind of hang out and talk with them and explain to them what you're doing and show them the yeah. ropes and then during the overnights you'll still check it every so often but the RV still there? Yeah know. we got the trailers there so that we have a trailer there for the overnight shift or anybody during the day too it's got heat and, and power and a microwave and um, uh, a TV and all that kind of good stuff and then we actually have internet down there you guys so if, <laughs> bring your tablets bring your laptops <laughs> bring your phones uh, there's plenty of entertainment to go on if you're waiting for a fish um, some water Pokemon yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> catch them all. Yep. so you have a, a training on Thursday August 15th 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. right that and, was uh, yeah that was uh, the training that we did for all new volunteers oh, I'm sorry that was August yeah so no uh, now, when it says new volunteers train beyond that date how do people do that just on the website they sign up for it yeah so um, and when you sign up there's a spot to check if you need training or not sure. and and if I don't recognize your name I'll be down there at the yeah. end of your shift anyway to train you up so um, the first training on August 15th was just for anybody who can come who's new or wants a refresher as if if you signed up and you've never been a volunteer for us before don't worry I'll be down there or my buddy Travis will be down there and we'll train you up um, at, at the beginning of your shift so now uh, and it's kind of silly, but I've never done this before. So kind of paint this picture for us. I'm looking sure. at the picture of the trap. Uh -huh. I kind of understand how salmon migrate and do all this yeah. stuff. But what is the process exactly? Uh, like, sure. Give us like a typical, when you're identifying these fish, what that looks like. Yeah. Um, during yes. and after and stuff. Sure. So the trap is basically like a, a jail right across the river. It's got big iron bars um, and then only one opening. So the salmon, they're always going to be going upstream when they're coming back to spawn. Um, and so they come along the river, find, find a time when they want to shoot upstream, and they'll poke against that, the, that jail, that, those bars, until they find the small opening. Once they find the small opening, they'll shoot up into that. That has uh, some little plastic fingers that kind of open up as the fish goes through it, but then they snap shut behind them, and that traps them inside a big box. It's a very large jail at that point. I think it's yeah. like six foot by six foot or so, something like that. Um, and now that fish is in that box. It can't get out of there anymore because those fingers snap shut behind it. Now, generally what happens is they splash at that point, and a volunteer can goes, oh, I heard something. I heard something. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get my waders on. Put the waders on, grab a net. If it's nighttime, grab your headlamp. If not, head down there. Yeah. Um, net the fish take a look at it, see what type of fish it is, see if it's male or female, and then bring it safely over the over the fence and let it go, unless you need a picture opportunity, and then we can take a quick picture. Oh, yeah. But, but you gotta can get, let it go after that, too. Oh. So, not, not to get too anatomical yeah. here, but how is it easy to distinguish a male from a female fish? I don't know. Yeah, personally. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's part of the training that we go through. Um, uh, you know, just for your listeners here, uh, a male fish is going to have a really broad, long head, kind of like a, a big sloping forehead, okay. and then it'll have some massively ugly teeth. That, uh, that okay. form below that. Usually Just like human versions. That. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. It. <laughs> Female has more of a blunted face, uh, yeah. like a football shape, kind okay. of the, the point of a football. Oh, okay. um, and then a lot, they'll have teeth, but they're a lot smaller, and they're not as grotesque looking as the males are. So the male teeth get real big. Well, thank God that's how you identify them. That's great. <laughs> and yeah. then the other one, too, are there some of their colors and yeah, stripes Yeah, then there's on other the ways. So it's all sorts of different. You know, they have a lot, picture. They yeah. have maps. That's really we, cool. We, we have all sorts of literature down there to help you, help it's you cool. out with that identifying fish. I can't believe it's been a year since we first yeah. talked about if this. If you got together. time, yeah. definitely do it. Yeah, absolutely. It's a lot of fun. Okay, go on down there, Spencer. You need to be you yeah, need yeah. in the water. Get your hand on the fish. Uh, get yeah. your hands dirty, man. <laughs> I don't like water, but this isn't too deep. No, right? no. Get your waders on. So, yeah, and the Here's reason why we're kind of doing this program still is because we, uh, the, the Union River has been an outstanding um, uh, pop, uh, uh, spawning population for uh, Hood Canal Summer Chum, which are threatened on dangerous species list still. We're working toward recovery, of course. Um, we want to continue to enumerate the amount of uh, incoming spawners every year because I also have a, a out migration program going on now where I put a smaller trap upriver of the current trap during the winter and we count all the small guys, all the, the juveniles leaving the river every year so that we have a full picture from 
egg all the way to returning spawner of the, the what, what's going on in that river population wise and oh. abundance wise um, productivity wise that's really cool So we can keep an eye on that really well and then um, hopefully that'll help us determine um, when it's uh, uh, when we have the ability to go ahead and delist summer chum sometime mm -hmm. in the future here so wow. Cool. Well, yeah. good to see you, Clayton. Yeah, it's always good to see you guys. That's and fun stuff. Salmon yeah. Center, pnwsalmoncenter.org. Get involved is the tab. Hover over that and then volunteer opportunities. You can also see some pictures of uh, other fish that folks have uh, helped get through the trap there and habitat projects, all sorts of great things going on. And, uh, oh, I know this is in your department. But I'm sorry. Adios and Valconeos. Yeah, Big check from Woodstock, right? To help with the yeah, uh, yeah. We got they donated all of the alcohol that was sold that was donated to us. That's awesome. Um, so that I was a no great, great thing. Um, really helped out a lot. Very neat. Yeah, so thank you to all those folks.